Ya marhaba. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that affects each one of us. I'm going to talk about falcons. Now you must be wondering how the falcon can affect each one of us. Well, let's find out. Now I'm going to introduce you to a man that's called the Master Falconer. A man that was raised with falcon and now he dedicated all his life for them. Oh, mashallah, what a beautiful falcon, huh? Marhaba, marhaba. So what do you call her now? Oh, How old is she? This is one of the Alkamda falcon birds. She's a young bird. She was hatched in April of uh, this year. Oh, my name is Mohammed Alkamda, and I am the founder of Alkamda Falcons. And we specialize in captive breeding of falcons uh, in the United Arab Emirates, uh, as well as we have a lot of other activities that we do, as well with the brand, such as awareness and training programs and consultancies for uh, breeding projects and management. Take her, put your left hand. Of course. And uh, you can hold her. Yeah. Just make sure she's uh, she's tethered. This is one of the Alkamda falcon uh, females that's mm -hmm. going to be used in, uh, in the breeding project in the future. As you will know that uh, the falcons that we have here, they are bred in captivity in the mm -hmm. United Arab Emirates. I have been around falcons uh, all of my life. Since I opened my eyes, I could see a falcon in front of me. So they've been a part of my, my life growing up uh, as well. You know, having the falcon, uh, going out to the desert, socializing with people uh, that were my age or older than me at the time. Uh, sitting out in the desert, we've learned so many things in these social gatherings uh, with this icon or with this falcon or with the symbol uh, to a point that you know, you start realizing that this falcon is everywhere. It is in the uh, in the currency that we uh, that we have here in the UAE and many other countries as well. It is the symbol of many government uh, entities and government organizations. It is the symbol of the whole country of the United Arab Emirates. Alhamdulillah, we have achieved, uh, you know, some some first place awards, and we have won some competitions with these falcons because of their tenacity, speed, and well-being. My field of studies in the United States has opened up many doors uh, for me in my career, especially, uh, and especially in this region of the United Arab Emirates is because the biodiversity is very slim. Uh, water scarcity is very uh, very hard. The uh, water recharge areas for the groundwater aquifer uh, are basically not existent. So we always have this trouble of, of water in the desert. Uh, people think maybe it's simple, but it's not really that simple. So it opens up your mind to, to a lot of uh, ideas and solutions and how to tackle uh, these things in the environment, especially in the United Arab Emirates today. Over the years you start to realize a lot of these literatures that are available in the market today uh, is always written by a Western perspective, you know, in English obviously. Uh, so about four years ago we have decided, okay, let me write a book about falconry from our own perspective and it's been yeah it's been a good four years that we're writing it and hopefully next year in 2022 in quarter four the release of the final version of the book would be uh, would be published here in arabia it was an essential tool to have a capable falcon of, of catching its prey uh, to be able to survive so our methods are, are very, uh, they're very strict, they're very strong. How do we get these falcons to hunt? How do they, we get these falcons to catch? And we did many things. We started to improvise and use modern technologies, such as 
you know, the radio controlled airplanes and drones. Uh, before the drones, there, there were kites. We used kites and balloons for, uh, for that to get the Falcon more uh, airtime so they could fly for longer and harder. And that has changed the way Falcons are being trained today. 90s and early 2000s, I was the first one to actually assemble a radio control airplane together uh, to be trained with in falconry. And today this is, has become a standard method for training all over the world. You have to create that bond before you go into any kind uh, of training. There has to be trust uh, in the bond. There has to be a trust between the handler and the falcon. You have to trust the falcon that it will come back to you when you call its name. And the falcon has to trust you that you are a provider of uh, the food uh, for the falcon. Because these falcons hunt for themselves. They do not hunt for any other individual. So that bond of trust has to be established before you go into training methods. And now it's the feeding time for the falcon. Hey, wa, arfat an nabtaqil, batal barqah. Let me open your barqah. Come here, come here, come here. Food is here, served. Dinner is, lunch is served, حبيبتي. طالعيني أنا. بس يري منك يعني. Once you establish this trust, then it becomes an athlete. So you have to tailor each individual falcon with what they are missing in a training program. You have to work on the tenacity, you have to work on the agility, you have to work on the stamina of, uh, of the falcon and the power as well uh, when training these, uh, these animals. So a fal the falcons were removed from the endangered list because of the collaboration of falconers together, which is very important. And it goes back uh, to, uh, to the environment. Uh, because as, as you know, falcons are top predators. So if their numbers start to dwindle, you will know there is something incorrect with the environment. So when you start having issues like climate change, it affects the deer falcons in many, in many ways. It will affect its migration route, it will affect its breeding grounds, it will affect how further it has to travel, you know, during the, uh, the wintering courses. And that is because of, you know, climate change issues. That's because of, you know, uh, CO2 emissions. There are so many factors uh, that you can look into just by observing uh, predators in nature. The place where I'm standing right now is a resort. Now, think of a resort in your mind. No, 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 no. This one is nothing like that. Now that we have fed the falcon, it's our time to feed. Should I come, Hamad? I think you're right. Let's go. Let's go. Zain, I go to serve me. Tala ni ana. I want to catch. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hassan. I am Arabic chef of this resort, Ritz Carlton Al Wadi Desert, Ras Al Khaima. I am excited today to make some Arabic dishes for our the guest, and you have some lamb uzi and chicken majboos. السلام عليكم اهلين كيفكم شو الاخبار؟ اهلين كيفكم شو اخباركم؟ الحمد لله بخير. فيش الدي عاملينه للعيد الوطني نعم الخمسين لم شنك مع الاورينتال رايس اوكي لم اوزي وعندنا مجبوس دياي هذا السيجنتشر مال اليوم هذا السيجنتشر مال اليوم انجو يور لانشين كحيلة ريستورانت وان شاء الله نشوفكم على خير شكرا لك ما قصرت مشكور او محمد لوك ات ذيس بيس اوف اتس فولينغ اوف ذا بون 
it's falling off the bone. This is, oh, look at that. This is your piece, and this is mine. Hey, now, today we're going to be delicate. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Try it and tell me exactly what you think. Uh, oh, it smells so good, man. Allah, you can smell it. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Put it off the bone like that. See, it's melt in your mouth. Mm, mashallah, bismillah. So they have beautiful spices in the rice. And it has some uh, carrots, some peas, and the meat in the, in the rice. You can taste the real flavor. It, it just tastes beautiful. So guys, when we prepare the kuzi at the house for our occasions, either we do fogo or we do only the kuzi with the rice with it or the bread. And the way we prepare it is the full kuzi in the oven. So this is a mini kuzi, so it's only the, the piece of the lamb. And it's, it tastes similar, but a bit more modified than the Arabic style one. Because the rice and the flavors and everything is different, but you can feel more, more texture in this than the meat you have at home. Guys, look at the texture of the rice, and it is a bit spicy as well. Mm. Of course, on the chicken, Mohammed, it's well marinated, that it gives you a different flavor from the rice as well. You know, sometimes you have something spicy, you don't want to stop because it's nice, the, the nice spice, not the burning spice. Mm. So, Mohammed, now I know why this is special. Because to be honest, it's, it's, it's not like that. The typical Emirati machbous. It has a, a different blend of taste and spices and vegetables. We don't use that much vegetables in the Emirati machbous. We use what is available. <laughs> yeah. Most of the dishes were all prepared simply. You know, the boiling of the water, the rice was very important, and then whatever additional protein you had went on top of that. And that's how, you know, the machbous happened. So it's, a, it's actually a very simple dish, but having the spices in addition to a traditional dish is amazing because you start tasting many different kinds. Yes, true. Sure. Mohammed, this is the tahira salad. Let's try that. And so the, the tahira salad is all homegrown at this resort. So this is all homegrown. And all this organic. So you know, Mohammed, our last episode, if you saw it, we're talking about the organic food and our Greek chef was always recommending and he always yeah, serves yeah. organic food. And I'm so happy to see this here also in the hotel, you know? You can definitely taste the freshness of the uh, ingredients oh, that yeah. are used to do uh, the salad. Really, and it has like... I don't know what kind of dressing they used, but it's... Uh, <laughs> you see, it's like a honey kind of dressing. Sweet. Uh, and it's a bit yeah. sweet. And then what happens also when you have the, the apple pieces also in your mouth, you can really like break the taste of the, all the meat and everything you eat. Then you can go back to the next dish. So it's like a palate cleanser. You know, those apples we have, it's really nice. Mm. So of course, here's also Mohammed some Tabbal, some Baba Ghanouj, and some Hammara, and Hummus. And this goes really well with the grilled food now. Now this is super healthy, super fresh, and that's a beautiful chili that we can make Mohammed's life even spicier. <laughs> I'm having some more salad. To be honest, because the caramelized walnut makes it taste wonderful. Mm. You see this piece, Ahmed, this uh, doesn't have any oils or fats in it. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty healthy choice as well. So you try some of the chicken, some of the lamb and the lamb chops. Mm. Very beautiful texture, taste and the quality of meat. Look at the lamb chops. Mm. Mohammed, as you said exactly. But this one has a bit of fat on the end, so it gives you the flavors of the fat and the protein as well. It blends and tastes so beautiful after this piece of onion. Mm. After today's special meal, I can say that I feel important. Today we have learned that every single being on earth is important because it creates a balance and stability to nature's processes. And on that note, I'm signing off. But don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and press the bell icon on the right.